Hi, thank you everybody <clears throat> for that uh, rousing applause. <laughs> Appreciate it. <clears throat> uh, my name is Anthony Chop. I'm the uh, first vice president of the New York State Nurses Association. What I'd like to do is uh, thank Jill Ferrillo for her expertise. As registered nurses, we identified a goal, but again, as registered nurses, we are not trained in how to maneuver uh, the political system or how to deal with management and achieving those goals. And Jill's expertise has been instrumental in helping us achieve the level of a success uh, that we have today. Uh, so for that, I, I thank you. Um, so my name again is Anthony Ciampa. I'm a registered nurse. I'm a cardiac telemetry nurse. Uh, and I'm also vice president of, of NISNA. And I understand firsthand the challenges of being uh, charged with caring for patients with limited uh, resources and namely what we're talking about today is staffing so uh, in the few minutes that I have right now I, I would just like to personalize uh, from my perspective uh, how this data uh, is perceived by uh, nurses on the units and what we're faced with and why uh, because of this data we need to uh, increase uh, our levels of staffing so that we can deliver the type of training that we're, we, the, the type of care that we're trained to, to give. Um, so as registered nurses, we have a moral and ethical responsibility to our patients. And as individuals, we can advocate, and that is the very nature of our profession, to advocate uh, for patients at the bedside. Uh, when we are together in an organization such as NISNA, we're able to do that on greater levels so that we can advocate for all the patients within the hospital and all the patients within our community. And that is what our struggle is about, improving the level of health care in, in our communities. Um, as frontline caregivers, we see, as Jill had mentioned, our patients are living longer. So the patient acuity is rising with longevity. And uh, as technology uh, increases, it's meant to enhance our delivery of care. But all these things uh, consume more of our time in terms of documentation, in times of training, uh, learning how to use the different uh, new state-of-the-art equipment. Uh, I'm a registered nurse at New York Presbyterian Hospital. It's uh, one of the world-renowned institutions. And uh, unfortunately, as uh, technology increases, and the acuity increases, we have not seen an increase in the levels of staffing that we need to deliver safe and quality care. Um, we've appealed with management. Uh, we've set up committees through negotiations in order to deal with the day-by-day -day, uh, uh, needs and, and assessments of staffing. Um, our hospital is pursuing something called Magnet, which is a prestigious award uh, given to the hospital for involving nurses uh, as equal partners within the institution. But unfortunately, what we see is that this is uh, a house of cards. Uh, it, it's something that's meant, uh, they uh, create uh, these participatory programs, but it turns out it's more of an illusion than a reality that it's a shared governance of our workplace. And we say this because we've had meetings on uh, the participatory level through something called professional practice councils where registered nurses sit with management and we've provided data, factual evidence, uh, statistics as to why we would improve the quality of care with increased staffing. Uh, and, and Jill talked about reduced readmission rates due to infection, uh, due to falls, uh, due to improved patient education so that they improved uh, diets so that they, they don't get readmitted into the hospital. But despite providing all the factual and raw data, management has insisted that the staffing levels are fine the way they are. Um, it's very important that uh, the people in control listen to the people that are on the front lines because we see on a daily basis what this does and how it impacts our ability to deliver patient care. Um, so we've escalated. We've signed petitions uh, to appeal to management, and we realize that the, the two things that we need to do are take collective action and, and fight for legislation. Uh, so collective action is what we do as a union. Uh, but through collective action, we've uh, 
um, spoke with the state office and we've been successful in uh, getting this directive to study safe staffing levels. Uh, we speak to elected officials. Uh, we've, as registered nurses, have, have attended city councils and passed local resolutions. Uh, we've attended and, and, and educated community groups as to why the need for safe staffing is important because it affects all of us. I mean, these are our families, our aunts, our uncles, our grandmothers. We live in, and work in the communities uh, that we're in. And we've even had nurses elected to government. Um, so rather than invest in nurses, uh, Jill also talked about uh, what management's efforts are. It, it's a very short-sighted uh, um, agenda to you know, the concern is that if you increase the staffing in nurses, this is an increase in expenditure, but we see it as an investment. And, and that's why it's important, um, you know, that we have these uh, uh, staffing ratios uh, to deliver safe and, and quality uh, nursing care. So I, I just want to thank you for listening to a personal testimonial. And, um, and, and then I'd like to introduce my colleague, Mary Fitzgerald. Thank you. Thank you, oh. Anthony.